Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a very, very long time, trust me. As you can probably tell from the title of this video, this is going to be a top 10 video. A top 10 video of my favorite matches. Now, while I was originally going to start this and not have an actual order and just say 10, I felt like, you know what, that's kind of stupid. So let's let's get into it. Starting off this list, we have a mixture of matches. In Stardom, it is tradition to have a gauntlet match where a wrestler faces off against most of the roster whenever they are deciding to retire or leave the promotion. While there have been a number of them over the years, there are three in particular that I want to talk about here. Starting with Kyrie Hojo's, now known as WWE's Kyrie Sane, her gauntlet match was pretty phenomenal because it was somewhat emotional as you could tell a lot of the people in the backstage really loved her. The best moment of the match though was during her spot against Io, where Io, after the match had already ended, they had already gotten a time limit draw, Io decided to still do her moonsault off the top rope and then give her a big hug. It was a very emotional moment of two friends saying goodbye to each other. Second one is Io Shirai because it was really fun to watch her interact with the roster as you kind of got the feeling that maybe they didn't really get to goof around with her as much in the back because of her presence. So here we see a number of the wrestlers actually kind of take advantage of that fact and do some silly things with Io, like Saki Kashima planting a huge kiss on Io's lips, Natsu Samire using um, Io's new photo book that she had just had uh, released, as kind of like a distraction slash comedy gag prop. And then of course you have Io extending her match against Momo Watanabe so that she could pin her one last time before leaving. How nice of her as a mentor. The last one is Kagetsu's gauntlet match. And this one is good for a number of reasons. Mainly because around the time that Kagetsu retired, there were rumors circulating around the net that Kagetsu was not very well liked backstage, that she had been ousted from her job as trainer by the roster because they did not like her um, training ways. And this whole thing just proved that to be completely wrong. You can see on everyone's faces that they were 100% behind Kagetsu and they were devastated that she was leaving. They loved Kagetsu. You guys might not have considered mostly because it's not really technically a good match, but I love it for a different reason. But if you guys have been watching me for a good long while, you might have kind of guessed that this was going to be on the list somewhere. Of course, I'm talking about a match that I had actually given best match of the year in 2018. And that match is, of course, Tam Nakano versus Natsuko Tora in the 5 Star Grand Prix. And what can I say about this match? The beginning of the match is the perfect embodiment of why this match was so great. Bell rings, both of them just charge at each other. And it was a brutal brawl that you don't really get to see very often in stardom. And it was kind of cool to see these two in the beginning of their careers face off against each other, since both of them are going to become, much later in present day, kind of the heads and top of the promotions and their own factions. This match is the first one on the list that is on here purely because of in-ring talent. The rest of them are either emotionally driven, uh, comedy-based, or just story-driven. But this one, Kagetsu versus Konami, singles match, special match. They got a 30-minute time limit even though it wasn't for a belt or anything. It was amazing. Since Konami's arrival to stardom, you kind of got this sense that she was way better than she was showing. That if she had really got the chance to let loose and go all out, that none of the other roster would even be able to compare to her. But unfortunately, with her somewhat unmotivated personality and her low status on the card, it kind of seemed like we were never going to get that chance to see that. That was until she got this special match against Kagetsu. Now, Kagetsu wasn't exactly known for her in-ring ability, her mat-style wrestling, but in this match, she showed that she was very, very good at it, and Konami finally got to face someone who was her equal. They went on to have a 30-minute technical masterpiece. 
And I remember watching this for the first time. I was sitting in the living room with my dad. We were both watching it. And after the match ended, we were like, man, that was so amazing. And then we saw that it was like, wait a minute. How long was that match? It was 30 minutes. It's a 30-minute time limit match. But it does not feel like a 30-minute time limit match. And that is why this match is so good. I need to stop saying match. Let's talk about brutality. Kairi Hojo, now known as Kairi Sane, you guys might not really know how brutal she was in her early days of stardom. Stardom used to be a different promotion than what you guys are remembering from nowadays. Stardom had some pretty killer women in there. And by killer, I mean brutal and evil. They wanted to kill each other, and this match is the perfect embodiment of that. So what is this match? Kairi Hojo versus Mika Iwata. Every now and then, you know, before stardom burnt bridges with literally every promotion in the galaxy, they would have these cross-promotion battles. And this one in particular was a pretty special one since it involved Sendai Girls, uh, Mako Satomura's promotion. They had three matches on the card. You had Kairi Hojo versus Mika Iwata, Io Shirai versus someone that I cannot remember off the top of my head right now, and Mayu Iwatani versus Mako Satomura, if I'm remembering that correctly. Editor Strokovich. Am I right? This match from beginning to end was absolutely amazing. And the reason for that is because I don't understand what Mika did to hurt Kairi so much, like emotionally, that Kairi felt the need to just destroy her essence. So sometime in the match, Mika Iwata actually gets her nose busted, bleeding, blood, and you would assume that that would make that area of her face a no-go zone for the rest of the match. You would be wrong. For some reason that I don't think we'll ever know, Kairi decided, you know what, red is bullseye. And she gave a super hard spinning back fist right to Mika's busted nose. And I know it seems silly to have a match in my top 10 favorite matches list purely because of one moment, but that is what just happened. And that is why this match is on this list. You guys know that I love Momo Watanabe, and Io Shirai is an amazing person who could have a 5-star match with a plastic bag. So, I don't think it's much of a surprise that Momo has at least one match on here, and this match deserves to be on here. Momo Watanabe's second attempt at the white belt from Io Shirai, specifically, was one of the most... Intense matches between the two that you could see. They they just destroyed each other. Now, I know in the first match, Momo actually got busted open, so it might have a little bit more of a memorable feel to it. But, in the second match, Momo actually wins the belt, so that one felt a little bit more important to me. Plus, Io Shirai decided, hey, if Momo is going to take this belt from me, she's going to earn it. And earn it she did. Io brutalized her. She stomped on her. She kicked her. She slammed her. Very, very hard. But the cool thing about this list is this isn't even the most brutal match on the list. It's not even the most brutal match that Momo was a part of on this list. I think it's time to add some goofiness to this list. Up until now, it's just been either technical ability, brutality, whatnot. There is something that Stardom used to do, but they've kind of fallen away from in the recent history, and that is that they used to have very goofy-centric shows. And one of the matches that we are going to talk about here, uh, the only match we are going to talk about here, is the Costume Change Battle Royale. Now, I know that Stardom's current history would probably show you that Battle Royales and Royal Rumbles aren't exactly Stardom's strong point, with their very, very, very disappointing Royal Rumble that they had not too long ago. But you would be surprised that when Stardom isn't trying to be serious, they're actually at their A game. So this match had every wrestler dressed up as another wrestler in the promotion at the time. And 
there are some notable outfits that I want to talk about. We had Hanakamura as Mayu Iwatani, now as Natsuko Tora, Natsuko Tora as now, Hazuki as Tam, Tam as Jungle, Starlight Kid as Azumi, and Azumi as Starlight Kid, Mayu Iwatani as Kagetsu, Konami as Hiromi Mamura, and Momo Watanabe as Io Shirai. Hannah was amazing as Mayu Iwatani. She kept doing like a thing that Mayu was really actually um, famous for in her earlier days. She used to do that a lot. And it was hilarious because she would try to attempt some of Mayu Iwatani's more acrobatic moves. We, you know, acrobatic moves. And uh, <laughs> she did it with the grace of a drunken toddler. Then you had Tam and Nao as Jungle and Natsuko, and what made them really, really hilarious was that they both decided to act like monkeys, basically portraying Jungle and Natsuko as animals. And during that current time period, Natsuko and Jungle were um, kind of picked on by literally everyone in the promotion. So it was it was very funny to see them overreact by doing like monkey dances and stuff. And finally, you had Konami dressed up as Hiromi doing this really funny gag moment uh, with the jar from Hiromi's retirement. That was really nice because I really love Hiromi. I think she is like one of the best wrestlers to come through stardom, not because of ability, but as an entertainer. Sometimes it's just fun to be all silly and goofy and not have to be all so serious all the time. Bushi Road. Stop taking away the silliness of stardom. It was super fun when they would have their stupid shows. I like their stupid shows. I want you to bring back their stupid shows. They only did them like once or twice a year. What's the harm? Alright, now that we're done being goofy, we are back to being stiff and brutal. Mayu is known for one thing more than any other thing in her career. Do you know what that is? I'm going to let these two tell you about it. And Mayu-san is very, uh, uke me. Something, many, she have many situations no bump side. Neck bump, back bump. Rolling so here we have two separate matches, both of them having Mayu defending Stardom's honor, one that she wins and one that she loses, but the commonality amongst both matches is that Mayu gets the hell beat out of her by her opponents in the most brutal ways possible. Takumi Iroha hits her with some of the most savage strikes and powerful slams that you will see in a stardom ring. And Yoshiko is like early Hazuki aggressiveness, but worse. It was brutal. And that is why they are on this list. Slight kind of semi honorable mention. After you're done watching the Mayu versus Yoshiko match, in that same show you have Mayu versus Nanae Takahashi. And that match is brutal. It is super good. If you just want a quick look into how stardom used to be in terms of brutalness and stiffness, watch that match as well. You're gonna love it. You guys knew what was coming. We're reaching the top three on the list and a certain someone hasn't been mentioned very often. So this is the part of the list where Tam Nakano basically dominates and you guys go to the comments to talk about how biased I am. Am I biased though? Am I biased if we're talking about one of the best wrestlers in stardom? And yes, I said that correctly. You guys should know by now, I've said it multiple times, that I believe Tam Nakano is one of the best overall wrestlers in stardom, if not the best. And I am not going to take that back. I truly believe that. So which match is this one? Well, the title card that came on before this stupidness um, should have told you that already. But it's the match specifically where Tam separates from stars, creating her own separate faction called Cosmic Angels. And that is, of course, the match where it is Mayu Iwatani, Starlight Kid, and Gokigan Death versus Tam Nakano, Unagi Sayaka, and Mina Shirakawa. This match is incredibly emotional and is the payoff of a lifetime after a super long 
drawn out storyline because you can't just consider the storyline once Mina showed up. You have to take it all the way back to when Mayu first tried to recruit Tam into stars. I actually have a video on this and it was such an impactful storyline and it's such an impactful match that it is actually the subject of my first wrestling music video that I made. The after match promo and performance put on by Mayu and Tam is enough. That alone makes this match number three. This spot is for a series of matches that make up a long, emotional and hard-hitting rivalry that in its end cemented Julia as being one of the top performers in stardom. Tam and Julia's trilogy of matches for the white belt is nothing short of one of the best things that stardom has ever produced in their life. We're talking about two of the best people at making memorable and long living storylines working together to create a masterpiece. When making this list, I really couldn't decide which of these three I should put on the list. I mean, how can you say that one match is any better than another match in this trilogy? Yes, the finale is amazing, but is it amazing on its own or is it amazing because of all of the buildup and the groundwork that the previous two matches had put in? This story is about two people fighting for respect and glory, and in the end, we get to see the very sweet moment that Tam Nakano finally wins her singles title, a long-awaited win by many, many fans. I mean, just look at this scene. It's so emotional. It's truly one of the best things Stardom has ever produced. Well, there is one thing better because this is number two, but before we get to number one, I want to talk about an honorable mention. Back in the early days of my channel, before the copyright strikes from stardom that jeopardized everything that I was doing, there was a series of videos that I used to make. Every now and then, I would find a match that really truly resonated with me, and I would make an entire video talking about that match. And if you've been following me from the beginning, you might even know what match I'm talking about. I'm talking about, of course, Hiromi Mamura's retirement match. That's right, that little goofball's last match. She teamed up with Konami to face off against her old teammates, Momo Watanabe and Jungle Kiona. There is one thing I'm going to talk about from this match, because this is an honorable mention and shouldn't be taking up too much time, but... It is the finale of the match when Jungle pins Hiromi. You can see in her face that she almost doesn't want to do it. It's, it's kind of like when Roman Reigns pinned The Undertaker. You could see in his face that he, he just didn't want to do that, you know? And that's the exact same thing. It was very emotional. Now let's move on to number one. You guys have probably already guessed what this match is. Mostly because after 2 and 3, you guys know that this match hasn't been on the list yet. And that is, of course, Tam Nakano versus Arisa Hoshiki. I mean, come on. I made an entire video on this match because of how amazing it was. I tried to get around the whole not using footage thing just so I could talk about this video match. This, this match is amazing. It is one of the best storylines in stardom that they have ever done. It's one of the best build-ups, and it's one of the best matches. It is perfect in almost every category. Nothing in stardom has ever reached this level of emotion before. I mean, I legit cried the first time I watched this match. This is also the match that launched Arisa's amazing white belt run, and her awesome partnership with Tam later on. I know I should probably be talking about this match a lot, but I don't really want to. <laughs> I've talked about this match so much. If you want to hear my thoughts and covering of this match, just go watch the video that I made for it. It's an entire video. It's called like Tam versus Arisa seven months in the making or something like that. Just go watch it. It's, it's pretty good. It's a good video. It's one of my best in my opinion. Alright, so how was my list? Not too bad or crazy, I hope. So what matches would you have put on the list? And what matches from my list do you think shouldn't have been on the list at all? 
I am very curious to know what you guys think. Thank you for watching. Bye.